You guys smell that? That smells like... No. It must be free content. Alright. So, this is a discussion that has come up plenty of times in the past. And, um... I've never really gone over it. I mean, I've heard, I've made videos on this before, but I've never like explicitly talked about what exactly is going on. So, for context, let's say you have a game. It's got a little bit of water damage, or you know, what have you. Uh, it's very well used, and the contacts are just gross. That's not the right cart. Um, you know, you can you can clean it up. You can usually get it working. Uh, take this cart, for example. It's probably not going to come out too well. Let me uh, bring that down here. Uh, you can kind of see some of the pitting on these contacts. You can see on the edges, it's not, not quite smooth. Uh, if you look at the save chip here, you can see one of those legs is almost entirely gone. So this cart at some point has seen liquid damage and someone kept using it. Now, it does still work perfectly fine. There are zero issues with it. Uh, however, based off of the fact that, that that leg on that save chip is basically dissolving, you know, we want to we wanna try and preserve this. This is... I mean, it's not my personal taste. Uh, I'm not really big into the Zelda games, but, you know, it's Legend of Zelda, Minish Cap. It's generally considered a pretty good game. Uh, but also, this isn't even my game. Uh, a friend sent me sent this to me and asked me to, to repair it, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, some of you might be looking at this and going, well... Gee, Mako, why don't you just put some solder on those contacts? That'll clean it up real nice. No. Bad. So, whoever owned this previously, and I don't know if this was my friend who did this, or if it was the person my friend bought it from, um, but what happened was they used some sort of abrasive on these contacts and just took a very small surface layer off. Now, it's not... It's not terrible at all. I have seen much worse. And, you know, I, I've seen people take literal sandpaper to the cart edge connector. And that's just, that's horrible. But this is, it looks like a step below that. Now, there's still some pitting. So the contacts don't make the best contact. Uh, but I have yet to have any problems with it. But my main concern is just the fact that, that pin on that chip is basically gone. And there is... There's not a whole lot we can do to solve it, but the important chip, the mask ROM, that thing is perfectly fine. So what we can do is we can take another perfectly working game with the exact same motherboard, EO3-20, and then we'll just transfer over the mask ROM chips because this one has a perfectly intact EEPROM for saving. Um, and that'll take care of the EEPROM. Now, that'll also coincide conveniently take care of the contacts, but there is something I want to discuss. Now, you can always just get like a donor PCB made up. This this really isn't too hard to reverse engineer. It's a very simple circuit. It's a very small two-layer board, but let's go over a few things. So, for modern PCB fabs, there are three different options for finishes. Now, we can get this silver-looking finish, which is uh, HASL, or H-A-S-L, for hot air solder leveling. Uh, and what this is, is they took the copper, then they applied solder to it, and then they just hit it with hot air to even out the finish. This is the cheapest option, and it works great for prototypes, but uh, it's not exactly the best at longevity. Now, I don't have numbers on explicitly, you know, how many insertions this is good for, but it's not a lot. You can't just have bare copper because as it turns out, copper will tarnish and it'll corrode and, you know, you, you, you got to add some sort of surface finish to it to protect it. 
This is a very thin surface layer. It bonds molecularly to the copper, but it does protect it nicely from tarnishing. Now, uh, solder itself will form an oxide layer, and that oxide layer isn't exactly conductive. Luckily, because this is a cart edge connector, you know, just inserting and removing it a few times from the cart slot generally will scrape away enough of that oxide layer to make good contact. Of course, the downside being some of that solder will scrape onto the uh, cart slot itself, and it could provide connectivity issues with other carts. Granted, you know, you just jam it in there a few times, and usually that's enough to, again, scrape it, so on and so forth. Um, long story short, it's not the best to use, but it will work. Uh, next up, we have ENIG, which is Electrolyst Nickel Immersion Gold or something like that. Um, and what this is, is they, they chemically electroplate gold onto the contacts. Now, this is not a very hard material for those that are actually familiar with what molec what gold is, you know, the, the, the hardness of the material, you know that it's very soft, and that's generally pretty true with these contacts. Additionally, because it's just an electroplated layer, it is very thin, so unfortunately, while this does provide better connectivity, um, and it does provide better durability than the hot air solder leveling, it's not quite as durable as we would want it either. Um, again, I don't have specific numbers on how many insertions these are good for. I'm sure that depends on a whole host of factors, even as far as, you know, which PCB fab you order it from. This is generally not that much more than hot air solder leveling. Um, this is generally the base. This is this is a minor upgrade. Most PCB fabs offer this. Um, it's it's not that bad. If you're doing a DIY cart, I recommend this. Now, the third and final option that we would consider for a flash cart is what Nintendo went with. Now, this is called Hard Gold, and it differs quite a bit from this finish here in that it is a much thicker layer of gold, like over twice as thick. There's just more material on the edge there compared to this one. Um, it's not really enough that I have the tools to accurately measure that. And that being said, these two PCBs might just be enough different thickness that I couldn't really measure that anyway. But it also uses an alloy of gold that is a little bit more hard uh, so it's a little bit more durable and stands up to multiple repeated insertions. Uh, if you look at the two next to each other, you can tell that there is a slightly different color to them with the way they're reflecting light. Now, it could just be that this one's a little bit more worn down given that this is brand new and never used, and this is obviously a salvage cart that at one point I'm sure was pretty well loved, but at this point it's no longer functional. But anyway, this is the ideal finish for uh, game carts. It has, of these three, this, the highest durability by far. Uh, and because it is a gold finish, or mostly gold, it is very, very resistant to um, uh, like tarnishing or corrosion or anything like that. Not not saying it won't corrode, especially if you scrape away that gold to get to some of the the metals underneath. Uh, so you know, as this wears down from you know a few thousand insertions or something like that, uh, you know it'll it'll probably corrode. And I mean this one, this one corroded at some point, but you can tell based off of the color in the reflection that someone took some material off of this one because it's not it's not the same color anymore. These should be reflecting the same color. They should be the exact same finish, but they're not. Um, so unfortunately this one has been damaged and there's no real good way to replace the gold on these once they're done. Uh, there are home DIY kits. They're prohibitively expensive. Um, they're not something that the average home gamer can just do themselves. Um, 
Now, to address an earlier concern, if you get solder on any of these pads, these gold-plated pads, it, the solder will bond at a molecular level to the gold, and you will essentially convert it to this finish, which is good for significantly fewer insertions. Once solder is on these pins, there's no going back. There's just, it's not, it's not feasible. It's not, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to try and revert it because to revert it, you would need to strip the material down and re-electroplate it, so on and so forth. Um, games with the exact same PCB are generally just a few dollars if you know where to look. It is significantly cheaper to just grab one of these of a less desirable title. You might have to shop around to find one with the exact same PCB. But once you do, got plenty good contacts there on this one. The save chip is just fine. So the solution to resolving our issue with this game is to just take both of these carts and we're going to swap the chip from this cart over to this one. Now, I highly recommend backing up your game, especially if it still works before you do this, just in case. I've already done that, so I'm not going to be taking the time to do that. Also, might as well back up your donor, because why not? It takes you nothing but a few minutes to do that. Uh, but in this case, this isn't really a game I care about. After we're done, though, I'll probably put this RAM chip on here, and you know, then we have a game until we no longer have a game. But, okay, enough rambling. To actually do the work, I'm going to be using a small hot plate here. This is the Miniware MHP30. It is basically the, uh, there it is, the TSADP soldering iron. Just instead of a small tip, you have a stupid big tip uh, with a non-stick surface so that it doesn't take solder. Power supply is not the exact same, but I think I think this one comes with a slightly beefier 65 watt power supply, but it'll take just about anything, uh, just like the soldering iron. The only difference is it might be a little bit slower to heat up. So we are going to heat that up, and we're going to start by removing that round chip. I'm just going to go ahead and place that right on top. It's going to take it's going to take a little while to heat up, so I am going to use to apply some flux to make the removal nice and easy. If this game had a battery, you need to remove it before giving it the hot air treatment with a uh, regular soldering iron, but this is a battery free game, so we should be good. We'll also need the tweezers. Oh, and I probably should have done this game first. I wasn't thinking about that. Because if we do this one first, we'll have the ROM chip off. And then we can just lift it up and put it onto the other one. Without having to swap cards. But it's, it's already at 135C. I don't really want to, I don't want to touch that if I don't have to. You can use hot air to do this too, but I'm not going to lie, I'm really liking the uh, hot plate method. Alright, we're going to pop that off, let that cool for a short while, before sticking the other one on the hot plate, I'm going to get some flux on it.
There we go. It was kind of stuck down with whatever caused the liquid damage in the first place. And if all goes well, we should have that soldered back on. Apply a little bit more flux to our donor board here. The more flux, the better the job. The bigger the gob, the better the job. That's not supposed to happen. Hmm. Something's going wrong here. I'm going to pull that off. I think my flux is boiling. It's giving me a hard time. It's too hot. Yeah, you can hear it popping. I'm gonna... I'm gonna reset that, let that cool down. Okay. I worry I may have warped the board a little bit. You can see that kind of teeter-tottering back and forth. Pull that off instead of continuing to cook it. Try more flux. There we go. I think I just let my hot plate get a little bit too hot. I'm used to uh, soldering with a soldering iron, and with my soldering iron, I keep that near about 300 degrees Celsius. With the hot plate, probably don't want to get it that hot. It seems like the uh, happy spot is about 220-ish. There you go. Now we just need to clean up that flux and uh, jam it in and we should be good to go. I am going to go take a few moments to do that and my method for doing so 
is plastic bristle brush and isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just gonna really douse the thing, but I'm gonna unplug that and let that cool down for the moment, and I will be back shortly. And just so there's no funny business, if we tilt that, uh, I'm not having a good time here. Can't really read that, can you? Well, you should be able to see that second line down. A G B B Z M E. It's upside down. That is the um, ROM on there, and you can see. Should be good. But just for comparison. Just so you know, I'm not pulling the sneaky on you. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. Got it cleaned up, popped it in there. It says the data file is corrupted. That's, I mean, that's kind of to be expected. It it has the save for the wrong game in it. Uh, so all three slots are bad. But we can start a new game. And all will be well. Or I could just restore the save that I already dumped off this game. Unable to save file. That's a problem. But that's okay, we'll get to that. Uh, so, I figured out why this thing popped. And it's because I made a mistake. Uh, like I said, I got it a little too hot and you can see the board just has bubbles in it. Uh, so, I don't know. That could be related to why it's not saving. But I don't really care to find out because I messed this board up. My friend trusted me with his game, and I broke it. So we're going to do what we can to fix it. And if I break it again, well, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? Um, but it's okay. I scrounged through my, um, my donor pile. Let me get some flux on here. And I found this. Some game that I'm never going to play. But if we pop it open, look at that. AGBEO3. It is the board we need. It's got a nice good EEPROM chip on there. So, we'll just use that one. If it were my game, I would just hit it with a soldering iron. Don't really care. It's, it is what it is, you know. Uh, but it's not my game. And I hold myself to higher standards. So let's see if we can't fix that. I'm going to let that heat up and grab my tweezers. And let us try this again. There we go. That is off of there. Let's load up the donor here. And that'd be perfect. It'll center itself. And we'll pull that off. Don't want to overheat things again. And let's solder this one down. You'll love that when the chip just centers itself. Doesn't always, but close enough. Okay. If 
you're using a hot plate, by the way, that thing will take a good few minutes to cool down. Now, just to play it safe, because the other one was having a saving error, I'm going to finish this up by soldering, by hand soldering. So I am going to turn on my iron to preheat it. And just as a precaution, I'm going to take some masking tape. And we're going to mask off these pins because we don't want any solder on them whatsoever. Because like I said, once the solder gets on them, there's no, there's no undo button for that. Failing this, if I royally screw this one up too, I do have a perfectly working copy of Minish Cap that I'll send him. And then I'll just not upload this video. <laughs> Flux makes everything easy. Go oh, that side is nice and soldered down. And then we'll do this side just as a touch up. There we go. While I'm here, might as well get the other two. Or hell, if you're doing this yourself, probably should have done these two as practice. I'm pretty comfortable with my hand soldering, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Plus, at the end of the day, these are donor carts, and they're both already messed up anyway. And I'll do this one. And I could just leave that short because I can see that those two pins are connected. But I don't like how sloppy that looks. Good 
Good Lord. And normally I'd use my liquid no clean flux, but this tacky paste flux does work better and I do already have to clean these boards. So that's what we're using. Man, I cannot get this last short. I can walk it all over this side, I just can't get it to go away. Clean the iron, a little bit more flux. Man, it is being stubborn. Okay, time for the wick. There we go. Now let's see if we can't bring back that first pin anyway. Can even get solder to stick to it. I'm not sure how it was hanging on there. Oh, well, there we go. enough flux anything is possible no there we go so this one might be fine going forward now I still don't like it but that's why it's a donor game and not the original legit game now I'm not gonna clean this up we're just gonna try it right here right now Ooh, hot plate's still hot. Don't, don't touch. All right. Should complain about the save again. Look at that Nintendo logo. I don't even have that on screen. I'm sorry. The Manishka. Press start. Hey, we're not getting a corrupt error this time. Just empty save. And it saved. I'd say we're good. Uh, now the last step in this is I am going to, well, I'm gonna clean up the rest of the flux first, uh, but then I'm gonna go ahead and flash my friend's save back to this and package it up and he's good to go. Um, I've got quite a few other carts to do first. Uh, he actually sent me a few more games, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do all those on video because the process is identical for all of them. Uh, the only difference is the other ones that I need to do are Game Boy Color games and normally you'd remove the battery first, but my friends, relatively handy with a soldering iron. He already went ahead and did that for me. So we don't even have to back up the saves on these because there won't be one. Uh, but we just need to swap the ROM out and we will be good to go. But let us see what's going on real quick before I bid you farewell. So this is his Oracle of Ages cart. And you can see the pins on this one are in much better condition, but you can see all those lines on them. It looks like someone hit this one with an abrasive too. Not quite sure what happened. Uh, this one, I honest, you know, I 
I'd probably leave it as is if it were my own cart, but he asked me to clean it up, and he even sent me the parts to do it, so I'll go ahead and clean it up for him. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got. It's just going to be more of the same. Um, I'm really digging this thing so far. It's pretty neat. I will, I'll throw a link to this thing if you guys want to get one. It's, it's very small. I don't know what utility it has outside of Game Boy game carts, but, you know, it's pretty nice. Um, comes with a power supply, not too expensive. Works like a hot damn. Anyway, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching, and, uh, I'm going to go clean up this gross flux, and I will catch you next time. Look at them beautiful pins. A little bit of wear, but, you know, it's to be expected with used donors. Oh, there's a bunch of flux on the back. Oopsie doodle. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night.